part of the divine plan, no matter how undesirable it may appear to those who idealize purity of relationship, or how ruthless its application is at the present moment. Something intended is being brought about and it cannot be avoided. The urge to make becomes peculiarly strong when men are removed from their familiar settings and experience the novelty of complete loneliness, when the normal inhibitions and customs imposed by family relationships and national standards are removed, when danger of death is constantly faced and the larger value submerges the lesser values and the usual conventional attitude, and when the physical organism has been trained and brought by scientific treatment and heavy feeding to the height of physical efficiency. I am speaking in terms of physical effectiveness and not of mental efficiency, which may or may not parallel the former. The animal instincts are therefore potent. The centers below the diaphragm become peculiarly energized. The emotional demands enormously vitalize the solar plexus center, and the center at the base of the spine increases the activity of the adrenal glands as the will of the man is called into play to surmount danger. The will to live, with its adjuncts, the will to perpetuate and to live in one's children, is powerfully fostered. To this must also be added, as a major adjunct of war, the will of nature is self-working under certain divine laws to offset the loss of life and the casualties of war by a fresh inflow of life into form, thus preserving the human race, providing the bodies for the next tide of egos and thus peopling the earth. In saying this I seek only to explain the phenomena which can be noted at all times when war is present and which in the world war can be noted on a large scale. The armies of the world are everywhere and are spread over every country. Racial transmigration is a universal factor, both from the angle of military necessity and from the plight of the civilians who find themselves in the path of war. This movement of millions of men everywhere is one of the paramount factors which will condition the new civilization, and its importance is based upon the fact that in In 25 years time men and women will be a hybrid race whose fathers and mothers will be of every imaginable nation. White fathers will have had physical relation with women of every Asiatic or African origin, thus producing a fusion of blood which, if recognized and rightly handled and developed, from the educational angle and with understanding, will express an embryo the nature of the sixth root race and which will be in fact humanity without any racial or national barriers, with no so-called pure blood and exclusive caste, and with a new and virile sense of life because of the infusion of stronger stocks with the weaker or worn out types and of the newer racial strains with the older and more developed. I hold no grief for the manner in. Copyright Copyright 1998 Rules of Trust 134. A Treatise on the Seven Rays, Volume 4, Esoteric Healing. Which this is being brought about. It could have happened without war and through a conviction that all men are equal and human, and that the mixture of races would solve many problems. War, however, has hastened the process and the soldiers of all the armies of the world are having physical relations with women of all races, all civilizations and all colors. This must, whether regarded as right or wrong according to the code of ethics and standards of the observer, 
produce an entirely new situation with which the world of the future will have to cope. It must inevitably break down national prejudices and racial barriers, the first producing more effect than the latter during the initial stages. Inevitably a more homogeneous humanity will appear during the changes of the next 100 years. Many attitudes and many customary reactions which today hold sway will vanish, and types and qualities and characteristics for which we have as yet no precedent will appear upon a large scale. Whether the conservative and the so-called strictly moral people dislike this worldwide happening has no bearing on the case. It has happened and is happening daily and will materially bring about far-reaching changes. These interracial and mixed relationships have always happened upon a small and individual scale, they are now happening on a large scale. For the results of this new preparation must be made. As is well known to you, there are certain diseases which are numerically dominant in the world today. They are 1. Heart diseases of various kinds, particularly afflicting advanced humanity. 2. Insanity. 3. Cancer, so widely prevalent among every type of man today. 4. The social diseases, syphilitic in nature. 5. Tuberculosis In a subtle and occult manner, these diseases are due to two basic causes. One is the close interplay between people, living under modern conditions, and the massing of people into cities and towns. The other is the age of the soil upon which man lives, a fact we will recognize or consider, for it is deeply impregnated with the germs and the residue incident to past ages. The immunity of man is an amazing matter, could you but realize it, he resists and throws off constantly and continuously every kind of disease those which are the result of contact with others, those which are prevalent in the very atmosphere at every time, those which are latent within his own bodily organism, and those which are inherited into which he has a constant predisposition. Man's fight for health is ceaseless and unending, ranging all the way from ordinary fatigue and tiredness plus the universal tendency to take colds to mortal disease, ending in death. Copyright Copyright 1998 Lucas Trust 135 A Treatise on the Seven Rays, Volume 4, Esoteric Healing to the trained occult observer, it is as if humanity, as a whole, is walking hardly in a dense shadow which engulfs the race, and some part of which involves an area of the body of every human being. One of the aims of the New Age will be, to lighten this shadow and bring people out into the fitness of true health. This same shadow penetrates also into the mineral kingdom, affects the vegetable kingdom, and involves also the animals. It is one of the major causes of all that can be considered under the name of sin, which may surprise you. It is also the fertile seed of crime. This is a fact to be accepted, to be properly considered and dealt with rationally, sanely, intelligently and spiritually, it will require all the factors mentioned to lift humanity out of the darkness of disease into established and radiant health. Certain of the masters are dealing with this problem in relation to the other kingdoms in nature, for there will be no full escape for man whilst his environment is still under the shadow of disease. Much that I could tell you in this connection would sound fanciful and would call forth the stopping amusement of the hard-boiled scientist. 
The theories held by mankind as to the origin of diseases, and the recognition of bacteria and germs and similar intruding organisms are largely correct, but this is so only if you bear in mind that they are in reality effects of causes upon which the investigator has not touched and which are hidden in the very history of the planet itself and also in the racial history of the past of which little or practically nothing is known. Surmise and conjecture rule here. 1. Diseases of humanity, inherited from the past. History, as studied today, goes back but a little way and although the enlightened historian and scientist may extend the story of humanity to millions of years, there is not known about the races of men who lived those millions of years ago, not as known of the civilization which flourished in early Atlantean times 12 million years ago, not as known at all of the still more ancient Lemurian civilization which goes back more than 15 million years, still less is known of that twilight period which existed 21 million years ago when men were scarcely human and when they were so closely related to the animal kingdom that we call them by the cumbersome name of Animal Man. During the vast period between then and now, myriads of people have lived and loved and experienced, their bodies have been absorbed into the dust of the earth and each has contributed something which they have gained during life experience, something different, however, to that which they contribute to the life of the soul on its own plane. This something contributed has altered in some way the atoms and cells of the physical body, and that gained something has in due time been released again into the soil of the planet. Each soul, withdrawn from the body, has come to the earth repeatedly, and many millions are here today, particularly those who were present in later Atlantean times and who are, therefore, the flower and the highest product of that highly emotional race. They bring with them the predispositions and the innate tendencies with which their past history has endowed them. Copyright Copyright 1998 Lucas Trust 136 A Treatise on the Seven Rays Volume 4, Esoteric Healing It should therefore be borne in mind that the physical bodies in which humanity now dwells are constructed of very ancient matter and that the substance employed is tainted or conditioned by the history of the past. To this concept must be added two others. First, that incoming souls draw to themselves the type of material with which they must construct their outer sheet, and that this will be responsive to some aspect of their subtler nature. If, for instance, physical desire conditions them, the material of their physical vehicle will be largely responsive to that particular urge. Secondly, each physical body carries within itself the seeds of inevitable retribution, if its functions are misused. The great original sin in Lemurian times was sexual in nature, and due largely not only to inherent tendencies, but to the extraordinarily dense population of its civilization and to the close relation of the animal kingdom. The origin of the syphilitic diseases traces back to these times. There is a beautiful idea in the minds of the ignorant that primitive races are free from that type of contamination and that the many sexual diseases and their results are predominantly the diseases of civilization. This is not so from the occult angle of vision. True knowledge is through it. In the infancy of the race, a great mismating, promiscuity and series of perversions took place, and in the language of some of the most ancient books in the master's archives we read, Earth took its toll and Earth to Earth, 
polluted and impure, return to earth, thus we will life enter the pristine cleanliness of the ancient mother. Deep in the soil the evil lies, emerging into form from time to time, and